Welcome to Roanoke County Today. I'm Amy Whitaker, Public Information Officer. This month, we'll look back at highlights from 2016, stories such as reimagining the 419 corridor, the Explore Park Master Plan, the restoration of Glade Creek, and the vital need for foster families here in Roanoke County. Thank you for watching Roanoke County Today. We look forward to bringing you new stories and updates in 2017. The South County Library is now a designated passport acceptance facility. Passport applications are taken by appointment during these hours only, Monday through Saturday, 9 a.m. to 4 p.m., and Monday and Tuesday evening, 6 to 8 p.m. For more information or to schedule an appointment, call the South County Library at 540-777-8782. Details are also located on the County Library website, roanokecountyva.gov forward slash passports. Visit the Town of Vinton's website at VintonVA.gov and find out How Do I? The How Do I link will lead you to find information on How Do I? Apply for a job. Read meeting agendas and minutes. Obtain a dog or cat license. And even search the Vinton website for information. That's the Town of Vinton website, www.VintonVA.gov to find out How Do I? Welcome back to the show. Joining me today is Ben Jones, Family Services Supervisor with the Department of Social Services. And we have joining us Josh and Jen Yurton. And they are a foster family who has have been working with social services. And I know you all are going to share some um, valuable information for us and hopefully for some viewers. But first, Ben, tell us a little bit about um, what this program is. Certainly, Roanoke County DSS provides free pre-service training and approval for families who are interested in being foster families for Roanoke County, um, which includes Vinton and Salem and the area around Roanoke City. Um, we're interested in fostering um, or foster families for children of all ages, in particular, um, we're very interested in recruiting families who are interested in learning about fostering teenagers, which is children over 13. Okay. And now for the Yurtons, tell us, how did you find out about foster parents? We learned about um, foster care from some friends of ours who took mm -hmm. in three foster children. Okay. Yeah, it was actually my old boss, and they took in these, these three boys through another organization and started the process. And the more we, what we saw what they were doing, doing and the impact that it was having on these boys and just how they were giving their lives to something that was bigger than them, mm -hmm. it was really compelling. And so we started off watching what they were doing and just thinking, I think this is something that we could do. Mm -hmm. You felt like you were called to this type of decision. Yeah, that's right. That's right. Okay. Yeah. Great. And what was training like for you? Was there a pre-assessment? What did you go through? Um, there's a lot of paperwork, and uh -huh. there lot. is um, there's some classes that you have to take. Mm -hmm. So um, on Saturdays and on Thursday evenings, about 27 hours of training. Mm -hmm. um, but you do it as a group, and it's fun, and the um, instruction is helpful, um, informational. Yeah, mm -hmm. I found that the instruction, especially through the county, uh, they have some tools and some people and some resources that were really valuable, not even for fostering, for sure, but even just generally, just some really helpful um, different tools and different experts that come in and speak to things like trauma and childhood mm -hmm. development and neurodevelopment and everything that it entails. So it's really amazing the amount of resources that they give you in that period. And if you're a parent at all, super helpful information. But if you're dealing in particular with kids that have some trauma issues or some, some history and that's not so great, mm -hmm. it really gives you a window into what they're dealing with. And sure. it gives you the tools, then the practical tools to help them navigate life. Because really that's what yeah. this is about, is helping these kids who have been hurt, who have been damaged, figure out how to navigate life mm -hmm. and to heal. And so that's what was compelling, I think, for us and what has been so helpful about the training that they provide. Okay, and so you have a network mm -hmm. of support, really, mm -hmm. for what you're doing. Yeah, and DSS does a great job with offering ongoing trainings, ongoing help groups, support groups, mm -hmm. those sort of things that make you, because foster parenting can be a, 
pretty isolating thing. I mean, you were really sure. focused on these kids. So to offer a community around that is really helpful. Sure, sure. You're not just left to take your training and then go out and right. do what you do, and but you still have that network back Yeah, you're not just right. thrown into the, well, you are kind of thrown into the deep end of the pool. <laughs> it is the deep end. It yeah. is absolutely the deep end. But you got people on the side cheering you on and helping sure. you swim. We'll throw some life rafts here and there. That's right. Great. And what do you think is the most rewarding thing about being foster parents? For me, it's watching the kids that we've had in our home for two and a half years now develop and grow and learn how to navigate life um, and start to recover and heal from the trauma that, um, that happened to them. And I think you know, enjoying them at a different level and falling more and more in love with them all the time. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that part, that part has been really beautiful to see a child who comes into your care and your job is to love them mm -hmm. unconditionally and provide a safe place for them. And they, they want that safe place and then they don't want that safe place. And so it's really challenging because you're sort of sucked into their whirlwind of emotions that they don't have the tools to figure out. And so your job is to help them figure those things out. And then when you have to send a child back that you have fallen in love with, that's a challenge as well, but right. it's worth it. That's what I was gonna ask next. What are some of the challenges that you face? Um, I would say some of the behaviors um, that come with a child that's been traumatized and figuring out a different way to parent because our typical parenting doesn't work. So we have two biological children as well. Um, and so rethinking how we parent and discipline um, has been really challenging for us. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay. yeah, and it, it, it is a challenge to navigate two kids who are coming into your home that have a different biology and have a different environment that they were raised in and they come into your home and they're forces of nature often mm -hmm. sure. uh, but, she, but the integration process getting them integrated into your home and how it works and helping them see what your family looks like and learn to navigate those things I mean the emotional ride of that is a challenge right. it really is because these kids really do upset your world mm -hmm. um, but again, I think it's worth it. It's worth it. Yeah. That's great. And what would you say to other people out there who might be considering becoming foster parents? <laughs> That's a great question. I think you, if, what I tell people is there won't be a more challenging thing that you do, but there won't be a more rewarding thing that you do with your life and your time. That's wonderful. Yeah, so, I'm a pastor at a church and we challenge people all the time to learn to give their lives away and because we're in, in our culture we're very consumed with our own world mm -hmm. and just protecting it and making sure that it goes smoothly and making sure that we pursue happiness really and so deciding to foster parent is a really different course it's a it's almost counter-cultural but with that, the, with the challenge comes this reward that I think is indescribable. You know, the, the hardest things in life often become the most valuable. Mm -hmm. And so when you have loved a child who doesn't love you back, that's a different paradigm than what we're used to. We're so used to receiving, but when you're able to stand in the middle of their storm and weather it and love them anyway, there's a, there's a whole different level of reward that comes with that that's really powerful. And, you know, I think if people think about their lives, oftentimes the things that are the hardest are the stuff that becomes the most rewarding. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so you're choosing to step into a situation like that. Mm -hmm. And it's, it's a challenge, but it's also, it's a beautiful, beautiful, beautiful thing, beautiful process. It's wonderful. Mm -hmm. Now, Ben, if sure. people are interested in um, becoming like the Yurtons, some foster parents. It's a high bar. What should people do? Sure, certainly, it is. Certainly. We are very <laughs> proud of the, of the Yurtons. Um, what they can do, um, there's of, often a lot of questions and there are a lot of things that um, you need to think about if you want to be a foster parent. There are a lot of really great rewards and there are a lot of significant challenges. Um, I'm available um, by phone, 283-8844. Uh, My resource coordinator, Jeannie C., is also available. She is our 
primary trainer and she develops the curriculum that foster parents are part of um, throughout their work with us, not just the pre-service, but the ongoing in-service trainings. Uh, and Jeannie's phone number is 283-8850. Um, we're happy to answer any questions. There's no bad question. Um, there are some families who aren't ready and we're happy to talk you through that and help you decide if you're ready um, to learn more about foster parenting because you don't sign up on the first day. We, we put you through 27 or 30 hours of training so that you really get what the job looks like and you can make an informed decision. You don't have to know what you want to do and the whole thing's free. Um, we believe it's a good parenting curriculum as well as uh, working with children who've been traumatized. Um, but we're, we're just really eager. Our community um, is a wonderful community. Uh, we do a lot of reunifications with families and adoptions where children get to be with their forever home. Um, but we're uh, a little thin right now because we've completed a lot of families in our area, um, which is wonderful. But um, we need some more families who are willing to work with us on any age child. But in particular, like I said earlier, um, if you're not afraid of a 12-year-old uh, or a 15-year-old or a 17-year-old and want to learn more about that, um, we're most eager to work with families in that arena um, because we are sending kids out of our own community because there are families in other places that are more willing to take our kids than we are. So I want to fix that. Okay. Wonderful. Thank you all for being here with us today and sharing this with our citizens and hopefully if people are interested they will contact uh, Ben here at Social Services. We'll be right back. Have you ever had an emergency? Immediately you call 911 and for that instant all you can do is put your life in the hands of the men and women who come to save the day. As an EMT you step into that world and make a huge impact in the lives of people who need help. As an EMT you could be the one person who could change a life forever. This is the mission of the Vinton First Aid Crew. The Vinton First Aid Crew is looking for volunteers who would like to help with their community. Some of the benefits of becoming a volunteer include training opportunities, working in an amazing building with up-to-date technology, having a flexible schedule, become part of the active competition team, volunteer incentives for future jobs, and more. For more information on becoming a volunteer with the Vinton First Aid Crew, call 540-983-0641, send an email to volunteer at VintonEMS.com, or you can visit their website at VintonEMS.com. Dot com. Do you have a neighborhood concern in Roanoke County? You can now report zoning violations online by using the Neighborhood Concern Submission Form. Simply select a zoning code and add any details about your concern. Provide your name and contact info and choose to opt in so we can provide you with follow-up reports. Enter an address for your concern or select the location from the map and click Submit Entry. You will receive a case number that lets you track the status of your concern at any time. Submit your neighborhood concerns at RenoCountyVA.gov slash zoning app. I'm joined by Doug Blunt, Director of Parks, Recreation and Tourism for Roanoke County. And Doug, the past year has been a buzz of activity regarding Explore Park. Uh, we're going to talk about the master plan or adventure plan as we like to call it. Uh, but first, how did we get to this point? Well, this was a very comprehensive process that we went through over the last 12 months to develop the adventure plan. Uh, we really started with a very uh, extensive uh, community engagement period with the plan. We held uh, over 16 meetings uh, where stakeholders and and citizens were able to participate and provide their feedback on the master plan. We had 300 participants uh, within our meetings. Then we did an online survey. Uh, it was another tool for us to be able to get feedback from, from different users and we had over 1,100 people participate in that tool. And the results of that well, is a fantastic master plan actually just released uh, several weeks ago. It's available at uh, explorepark.org slash adventure plan. Uh, but tell us a little bit about what folks can find uh, when they look on the site and look into that plan. Well, the adventure plan is it offers a wide variety of different outdoor recreation activities. Uh, it provides more access to the Roanoke River, more trails, provides overnight accommodations, uh, providing aerial type activities uh, with bridges as well as ropes courses. 
uh, but it also focuses on some of the other type of activities, uh, such as equestrian usage, having event facilities, uh, and trying to create, uh, you know, your true outdoor adventure type of theme to where you, everybody of all different types of ages and abilities have the opportunity to participate in something that is, you know, in the outdoors. And the plan really shows Explore Park as a, as a regional focus. Uh, talk about how it fits into the Virginia's Blue Ridge tourism plan for the area. Well, you know, we're very fortunate that we have an 1,100-acre parcel that is attached to a national park. You don't have that in a lot of park settings. And being able to be attached to Blue Ridge Parkway and being able to tap into the 13 million visitors that the Blue Ridge Parkway has on an annual basis, it's just, it's, it's a treasure. And we need to be able to capitalize on those visitors and be able to have them to come and visit Explorer Park and really create another destination along the parkway. Of course, it's not just out of town. Visitors Explorer Park will always first and foremost be a park for Roanoke County residents and residents of the Valley uh, as a whole. Um, talk about how residents have already come together to uh, start building some of those uh, requested amenities of the park. Well, one of the, the great things about the park is we've just seen a, a really a spike in just general usage at the park. People coming out and walking, using the river, fishing, uh, participating in already of what assets that, that we have there. But we've really had an outpouring of people wanting to not only donate their time, but wanting to partner with us to be able to build some of the different amenities. We've had lots of positive discussions about building an 18-hole disc golf course out at the park, uh -huh. as well as folks that are wanting to help us within the biking community to build additional mountain bike trails and a bike skills center. So really important, those community partners that have already started to make this vision uh, become a reality. Uh, so first, we're going to talk next about uh, what, what's going on now, what's the county doing programmatically, event-wise, uh, to really build up Explore in the next couple of years. Well, it, it's real important that we continue to create additional reasons to come out to Explore Park. So we're focusing on developing new special events, new additional programs, not just for children, but for families, for all ages, to be able to come out and experience the different seasons at the park, participate in the different already natural assets that, that we have within, within the facility. And then we will begin developing future additional programs of events, festivals, other type of really neat and innovative ideas that fit in well with the amenities that we already have at the park. Well, let's take a note, look three to five years down the road. What's the next step? Uh, what is staff going to be doing behind the scenes to make this possible? Well, we're going to be working with uh, many of our partners to help to implement the different aspects of the, of the venture plan. We'll be working to, uh, as I mentioned before, you know, having folks to help us with different activities and things, but also to help with the bricks and mortar of, of building some of the different attractions. We're going to be going out into the business community, talking with uh, potential new partners to help to make uh, some of the overnight accommodations, the ropes courses, the outfitters type of businesses a reality and bringing them in to help to, to implement this plan. So next time you go out to visit Explore Park, look for those changes. They'll be gradual, but they're occurring uh, throughout the next really 20 years is what the master plan calls for. Uh, and, and we're excited about the future and it couldn't have been done without community support. Have you ever wanted to make a difference in the life of an animal but didn't know how? The Regional Center for Animal Care and Protection is looking for volunteers to assist with the daily care of their animals. Volunteer opportunities include cat socialization, dog walking, front desk or kennel assistant, off-site adoption events, rescue networking, or shelter photography. As a volunteer, your time and talents will make a difference in the life of an animal. For more information on how to become a volunteer, call or email the Regional Center for Animal Care and Protection. Stay up to date with the town of Vinton. Visit VintonVA.gov and sign up for the News Flash, Notify Me, or Emergency Alert features. News Flash will inform users of what's happening in the town, including street closures or water line breaks. With Notify Me, citizens will receive information on activities, events, and even job postings. Emergency Alert can keep you informed in the event of an emergency or disaster in the region. Alerts can be sent to landlines, computers, cell phones, or wireless PDA units. Sign up today and be up to date with the town of Vinton. All right, I know this isn't any fun to talk about, but we should. Okay, so who's going to do what? I'll pack the dead batteries. Great. I'll only put what I don't need into a duffel bag. Perfect, that's totally unhelpful. No problem. Meanwhile, I will try to comfort everyone by speaking in a calm voice. And I'll try to get the generator going without any gas. Oh, let's not forget the cell phones, which probably won't work. Right. And who is going to handle supplies? I can forget to do a list for us. Thanks, pal. Well, I think we couldn't be any less prepared. I'm proud of you guys.
Talk to your kids about who to call, where to meet, what to pack. Visit ready.gov slash kids for tips and information. Welcome back to the show. We're out here at beautiful Vineyard Park today talking with County Engineer David Henderson. Welcome to our show. Well, thank you very much. So tell us exactly where we are in Roanoke County right now. Okay, we're located in Vineyard Park, which is located uh, between Vinton and Roanoke City mm -hmm. on the uh, eastern part of Roanoke County. Okay, and there's a special project that's going on right behind us. So give us some background uh, about the project and why was it needed? Okay, well, one of the features of Vineyard Park is Glade Creek, which flows right, right through the park. Mm -hmm. And we've been having some problems with Glade Creek. Uh, we've been having a lot of erosion. Uh, we are having some problems with water quality due to the excessive erosion and also some danger to some of our playing fields where the stream was encroaching in. Okay, and there are soccer fields out here, correct? That's correct. Uh, this is a, a major soccer complex. Okay, all right, so much needed improvements here. What exactly does the project entail? Well, we've got about a half a mile of stream, 2,500 uh, linear feet of stream that uh, flows from Berkeley Road to the upstream edge of the park. And what we're doing is we're using natural stream restoration techniques to uh, improve the stream. Okay, and what is natural stream restoration? Okay, what we're doing is uh, we're cutting the banks back to a more natural condition to provide uh, more floodplain flow area so that when we get high flows, we have less velocities in the stream, which will lead to less erosion. Uh, we're also protecting certain areas using natural stone and uh, natural wood, and then we'll be doing uh, replantings for it. Okay, and how was this project funded? Okay, this project was funded 50% uh, from a, a state uh, local assistance uh, grant fund mm -hmm. that the state gives for projects that will improve water quality, and it was funded uh, half with local funds. Okay, and when is the completion date? Well, the project started uh, around the 1st of August, and we expect construction to be complete uh, by the end of this year. It's not taking a terribly long time, and I know citizens will really be pleased to see this. Mm -hmm. Well, once this is done, it will take a couple years for the trees to grow in, mm -hmm. but uh, once they get in and start work, these kind of projects do not take that much time. Sure, it's going to be beautiful. And does the county planning on doing any other future stream restorations? Well, the state, uh, we are funding these with 50% state money. Uh, there is another application due to the state uh, January, February of next year, and we will be submitting for additional projects. Uh, so we do, we do hope and anticipate to do more, but uh, it's subject to, to uh, obtaining future funding. Okay, very good. Thank you so much for sharing all of this information with us. I know this will be a, a welcome site for many visitors and citizens nearby. So thank you very much. Thank you. Okay, we'll be right back. Have you ever wanted to find a book, read the latest issue of a magazine, or do research at your local library on a Sunday? Well, now you can. Our South County and Vinton libraries are now open from 1 to 5 on Sunday afternoons. This means that you'll have access to our extensive collection of books, DVDs, and audiobooks, as well as our library's many computers and, of course, our friendly, helpful staff. We want to be part of your Sunday afternoons. For more information, contact the South County or Vinton Libraries. Participation in the recycling drop-off program in Roanoke County has been steadily increasing. With the increase comes growing pains. The following etiquette tips will help citizens receive the most benefit from the recycling program. Break down any boxes before placing them in the containers. We currently accept plastics and all types of cans. Do not place items with food residue in trailers. Fill trailers to capacity. When the recycling trailer is full, do not place items on the ground outside of the trailer. Visit another recycling trailer location. Please use the trailers properly. Welcome back to the show. We are here 
on the hillside of Carlos Restaurant. Looking down at beautiful Route 419 and joining me today is Jill Luth, Economic Development Director, and Philip Thompson, our Deputy Director of Planning. Welcome back to the show. Thank Thanks you. Yes. So we talked a couple of months ago about the Route 419 corridor study. So give us an update as to uh, what's happening now with the, the plans. Uh, well, we've hired a consultant, State of Tech Urban Places Group. Uh, we started mm -hmm. collecting some background information and mapping that information. We've mm -hmm. developed a project website. Uh, we've been, oh, we worked with our consultant to develop an online survey and a My Sidewalk page for public input. Mm -hmm. And we've also developed marketing and promotional materials for the study and also for the kickoff event. Okay, a lot, a lot going on. So what will be looked at in this study? Well, the first thing they're going to do is look at a couple things. One is they're going to review the existing development and mm -hmm. uh, look for opportunities for higher density commercial and residential development. And that will be tied to a market analysis for both residential and commercial property uh, for the mm -hmm. area. Uh, they're going to analyze the existing transportation system and they'll develop a multimodal uh, transportation plan. Uh, they'll look at the build out of the study area. Uh, they're going to look at the existing infrastructure and uh, plan for recommendations based on the ultimate build out. Uh, there's a design charrette uh, that will be taking place to help develop design guidelines and standards for the study area. And then finally, there will be uh, regulatory and financial recommendations to implement the study. Okay. And Jill, what are some of the goals along with this project? Well, this corridor is Rona County's center of commerce. It mm -hmm. has long been known for its retail concentration and business development uh, mm -hmm. capability. And what we want to do is maximize that development capability. And through the study, we're going to do a, an extensive market analysis and a retail analysis so that we understand the residential components, the retail mm -hmm. components, and the business components, as well as the gaps in the market trade area. So once we do that, that, uh, hopefully we will come out with a plan that we can use to attract new businesses and redevelop areas of, along this corridor. Okay, and how can citizens be involved in this project? Well, there's a couple things. One is we have our kickoff mm -hmm. event. Uh, there will be other public meetings uh, that will include a three-day design charrette. Mm -hmm. and we'll also have community meetings associated with the draft plan and the final plan. Uh, we're going to have uh, three planning nights uh, throughout the study process that will be at a local business where we'll have a more informal setting for the public to engage with our, us and the consultants. Uh, we're going to have stakeholder interviews and we also have, like I mentioned earlier, an uh, online survey and a My Sidewalk page that people can provide their input on. Okay, and all of this has already commenced? It's uh, all available now? It is on the county website okay. and the kickoff event will be next Thursday at uh, September 15th at okay. 6 30 p.m. at the Holiday Inn Tanglewood. Okay. When will the findings be released? This process should take about six to eight months to complete and it will be mm -hmm. uh, with a lot of citizen and business engagement. So we are inviting everyone to participate in the process and give us your thoughts, ideas, and opinions so mm -hmm. that we can create a plan that is actually uh, market driven and realistic. Okay. And after it's all done, all of the input's been received, then what are the next steps? Well, the next steps will be to determine ways that we can actually implement the plan. And uh, mm -hmm. in terms of incorporating new regulatory measures and policies, uh, we want to take a look at that and how we can put them into place here with regard to mixed-use development standards and other modern development practices. Okay. So for additional information, where can uh, folks find it? They can go to our website at roanokecountyva.gov slash 419. Okay, very good. We encourage everyone to go there and see uh, what events that people can attend. And uh, certainly give us a call if you have any questions. Thank you both for joining us. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. We'll be right back. A pet is a friend. They are playful, loyal, and every pet wants and deserves a forever home. Did you know the Regional Center for Animal Care and Protection has many pets that are available for adoption? Our adoptable pets are listed online with pictures and descriptions, or you can visit us at 1510 Baldwin Avenue, Monday through Saturday, 1130 a.m. to 6 p.m. For more info about providing a pet a forever home, contact Emily Williamson at the Regional Center for Animal Care and Protection. Remember, there's no place like a forever home, so adopt today.